guys. So today we are with uh, Ruan Pablo from Chile. Hello, Ruan. How are you doing today? Hello, everybody. <laughs> so before we get started, can you just tell us a little bit more about you? Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me. A great opportunity. It's my pleasure. Uh, opportunity for me. <laughs> yeah, so my name is Juan Pablo. Uh, I am 25 years old. I live in Santiago, Chile, all my life. Um, for the last six months, I have been traveling uh, by bicycle around the Middle East and Africa. It is my first cycling trip ever. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, why you decide to start cycling the world? What makes you decide to do that? Uh, yeah, uh, good question. Uh, before this trip, uh, I never used the the bicycle for anything, so it's kind of weird. But before the pandemic, I was traveling around um, India, Nepal, Vietnam, um, all all these countries. Uh, I, I was moving by by train and by bus, and I I, I was enjoying the trip. Uh, it was a good trip, but I, at the same time, I felt that I um, I didn't have the freedom. I went. I, I wanted to to stop in all these tiny towns that I saw on the way through through the bus window. Yeah, it's always so hard I when you're that, on the bus. You cannot stop whatever you want. Bis bicycle is easy. Yeah, it's so terrible. Like you are doing, for example, a five-hour bus ride. Uh, and you see a beautiful town or a beautiful landscape and you just want to stop and I couldn't. <laughs> so I said, okay, I, I need maybe a motorcycle or a bicycle or just walking, but I need something with my own freedom. Uh, do you used to cycle as well in Chile or you not experienced at all? Well, uh, I, I had a, a bicycle, my, the bicycle that, that I use now, uh, for going from my home to the uh, metro every day to go to university. All right. Uh, just 20 minutes every day. But not big trip, just, just to go to work. No, no <laughs> nothing. I, I have many friends that, that do mountain bike, and they, they invited me to do it so many times, and I always said no. <laughs> so how how did you prepare yourself for such a trip how did you train and how do you uh yeah so uh, I, I always loved uh, to do all kind of sports i'm a big uh, tennis fanatic all right so I, I could say that i was in a good physical form just for for playing tennis going to the gym um, and I, uh, I, I felt very confident about it. Like uh, I, I said, okay, I will start the trip and after a couple of weeks, uh, I, will, I will get used to it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, now that I go backwards, I, I said that that was a stupid idea. So what was the first country that you fly to from Chile? Yeah, so, so from Chile, I took a terrible, terrible flight. Uh, to Turkey. Uh, to Turkey. Um, yeah, uh, I, I started in Istanbul. Um, my first ride ever was going from the Istanbul airport to Istanbul, which is 50 kilometers in the middle of the night. In and the maybe of the night. one of the, it was maybe the most dangerous day in the entire trip. A hundred percent agree with you because in 2019 I cycled from France to Turkey, and I also arrived in Istanbul at night, and I thought I would die. I never yeah, seen yeah. so much traffic on the road and absolutely no shoulders for bicycle. It's so so yeah. dangerous. Mm -hmm. If there's anyone yeah. want to cycle to Turkey or to Istanbul, don't cycle at night. <laughs> it's terrible. <Yeah. laughs> Yeah, that's that's good advice. You know, I remember get, uh, arriving to the hostel and throwing myself into the bed, and I couldn't sleep. Like uh, I couldn't even close my eyes. Oh my god! <laughs> so, what what challenges have you faced so far? Because you are on the road now for six months, right? Yeah, a little bit more than six months. 
So what, what are the biggest challenges that you have faced so far? Um, good question. Um, so, so many, like uh, everyday challenges. Uh, I think me, probably you will agree with me. One of the most difficult things is, for example, being cold at night in, in the tent. That, that for me is very difficult. I, I don't sleep. Um, also, headwind. Um, um, let me see. Ah, and by far, um, crazy drivers in crazy trucks drivers. and cars. Yeah, especially maybe in Iran and in Kenya. Are they crazy drivers over there? Yeah, well, in Iran, there is so many cars so many cars and trucks all the time. It was so hard for me to, to find a quiet road. Uh, so after a while, you, you just get used to it, but it's still dangerous. But do you feel safe a part of this? Have you been mugged or robbed on the road? Never. And I even see somebody uh, looking at me on a, with bad intentions. Like, uh, so far, nobody has tried to, to rob me. But uh, I had a, a problem in, in Iran. Uh, one day I was cycling, cycling in, in the middle of nowhere, no cars. And um, suddenly a black car appeared in front of me, uh, very far, fast, sorry. And he went into my line. Like, uh, I, I, like, uh, like uh, uh, facing me, sorry. So I say, okay, uh, maybe he's avoiding so, something or I, I don't know. Um, so I, I went on the side of the road just to avoid him, but he turned the, the wheel again and he faced me again. So, so in that moment I understood um, he was trying to hit me on purpose. So he tried to kill you? Yeah. Yeah, in the in the moment he was going really really fast, and I started shouting like, because I said, "Okay, this is it." And in the last moment, I I threw myself with the bicycle outside the road, and the car passed me. Maybe I don't know. I I felt the wind in my in my body, you know, when he passed by. Oh. In and which country was that? In Iran. In Iraq. But it Iraq. was only. One bad experience like this. Uh, all the rest of the people, amazing, uh, so helpful. They invited me to, to their homes. They they offered me help. It was only this this guy that I think probably he was drunk. Yeah, there is always people like this, and always people that's going to invite you and uh, offer you everything, even though they have nothing. And this. This is exactly. the good part of traveling. Exactly. We try to don't remember exactly. the bad stuff and always yeah, try to yeah. keep the good stuff in mind. <laughs> exactly. Uh, another question that I have for you is you're from Chile. So do you have any problem with it? Especially with COVID. Uh, luckily, from what I know, uh, Chile uh, has a very strong passport. Uh, I'm not sure about this, but uh, I, I read in the in internet. <laughs> uh, it was very hard for me to get the Iran visa. Uh, I know that I had to pay almost double as uh, European citizens. Um, I didn't get the visa for uh, Azerbaijan because uh, it was only possible if you had if you if you took a flight to the capital city. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wanted to cross by bicycle. Um, that's it. Yeah. All, so all the just other countries, all, all the African countries, no problem. No, no problem. Well, I, I in Africa, I have only been in uh, Kenya and Uganda so far. And for these countries, you apply for a one East African tourist visa, which I got it very quickly. So you can stay one month. No, I can stay three months. Three months. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very nice. That's pretty good. And um, 
after this, like, are you planning to do this for a long term, like another six months? Or are you planning maybe to, to see the world on the bicycle? What are your plans? Well, um, one, one of my objectives in this trip is to not make any plans because right. uh, before the pandemic, my idea was to, to travel for one year and everything, but uh, I had to stop very early. Uh, so right now I'm just cycling towards south. And if everything goes right, uh, in, in some months I, I should arrive in South Africa. Do you, do you know that you're not going to have a problem because you, you're planning maybe to go all the way to, to South Africa? Yeah. So are you not going to have any problem for visa, border crossing and everything? You, you know already you're going to be okay or...? Well, today I I realized that I cannot cross to Rwanda from Uganda by land, so I'm I'm uh, looking for another options because I really want to see Rwanda. Uh, so I'm thinking about maybe going first to Tanzania, then Rwanda, Burundi, Tanzania again, which I will have to pay two visas for Tanzania, and <laughs> I don't like that part. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I, I will see in the moment. Right now, just in, enjoy Uganda. How, how many kilometers a day do you average? Uh, well, um, it depends so much. But uh, before Africa, I was averaging maybe 80. Mm -hmm. uh, here in Africa, I'm doing less because there are so many ups, downs. Uh, meeting people and <laughs> you just get more tired. I don't know if you have been here. No, I've never been to Africa yet. Yeah, it's, it's quite a challenge. I thought it was going to be easier. <laughs> what about the road? Is the road okay or is it totally like destroyed and potholes everywhere? And uh... Yeah, you can find both. Uh, if you go off road, it's terrible. Like uh, you go very, very slow. <laughs> and if it rains, just prepare yourself for, for that kind of um, the, the soil they have is, is, um, is very sticky on the bike. So after a while, you cannot move anymore. And yeah, you, you just start asking for help or something. <laughs> and what, what, what your family think about what you are doing? Are they supportive? Are they scared? Are they what they think? Yeah, luckily my family and friends are really supportive. Uh, before the trip, uh, I felt that they didn't understand me so much. Uh, they didn't understand why did I have to travel alone and why did I have to use a bicycle for it. Uh, but they they knew that it was important for me. So right now, uh, now that I'm doing the trip, uh, I feel that they are very happy for me. And That's yeah, good. I'm very so you, you contact them, like you try to contact them every time you have internet connection. Exactly, yeah. I, I travel with, with no SIM cards. So every time I get the Wi-Fi, I, I try to call my family. That's the plan. <laughs> so many people want to travel, you know, for for many months, but they they don't know how to do, to get the, the finance. So how, how did you finance your, your trip? Do you have sponsors or you're it's just just from your saving? Uh, well, I would love to have sponsors. Uh, <laughs> right, right now, there are some people that support me in my webpage because I, I write travel stories. All right. And cool. people like them, so they, they do small donations every month, which I really appreciate. It. <laughs> uh, but no, um, almost everything comes out of my savings. And what um, about when your saving is finished? How are you going to come home? <laughs> well, uh, the, the idea is to, to come back home when I have uh, um, enough money to pay for a ticket back. All you right. Know? I'm thinking about just uh, giving a, giving away my bicycle, so because it is it's not a a good quality bicycle. I, I don't care about it. Um, 
I, I wouldn't have to to pay for the luggage. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I just go back, you know. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so what? Yeah, what's, who what, what is your most memorable experience so far that you had? Um, oof, it, it's tough, you know. It, it has been six months, but so many. <laughs> yeah, um, I really appreciate we, uh, appreciate when families invite me to to stay a couple of days with them. Uh, they are so nice and you have the time to, to rest and to get to know the cultures is so nice um, but besides that uh, I remember one time in Iran where I was just before uh, sunset very cold in the middle of the mountains and a car stopped and they asked me if I like dancing if I like wine uh, and if I like Iranian weddings <laughs> they say that I like that I love the three of them, so they invited me to to a wedding and I spent the whole night dancing. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it was amazing. I had something similar. I was traveling uh, in Kazakhstan with my friend, and uh, some people stopped us and wanted us to drink vodka with them. But we, I, I drink vodka sometimes, but not like them. Like they, they fill up the glass all the way to the top and they're drinking vodka like they drink water. I never seen people yeah. drinking vodka like this in my life. I get so drunk with them. Yeah. Waking up in the morning with a massive hangover at eight o'clock in the morning, I was going to drink coffee and they came to me, vodka. I was like, are you kidding, man? It's like eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I can't. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. The Crazy. They drink. They are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a, a last uh, question for you. Anything that you would like to, to say to, to people that would like maybe to, to start a cycling trip? Any uh, advice that you would like to, to tell them? Oof, uh, I, I don't know if I'm qualified to, to give advice for this because uh, maybe you have much more experience than me and so many other people. But for somebody who is who is who wants to start, I think that uh, you know just go for it because <laughs> so far in this trip I have met uh, very old people cycling, very young kids cycling. I, I traveled for two weeks with a family with three kids, wow. ten years old, eight years old, and five years old. They were all cycling. Uh, you know, I, I met uh, one guy from Turkey uh, who, who had overweight, like uh, 30 kilos overweight. And he, he told me the trip was helping him so much to, to go back to his ideal shape. Uh, so what I'm trying to say that is that it's, it's a good option for, for anybody. Maybe not start directly in Africa because it's a little bit more difficult, but so many countries in the world where, where you can start and having a, a great time, you know? I, are you planning to, after Africa, to go maybe in Europe or maybe in America and maybe come back to, to Chile on the bicycle, to fly to America and to come back to Chile on the bicycle? Yeah, uh, there are so many things that I want to do. Uh, uh, one of them I, I would love to visit um, Eastern Russia with uh, Mongolia, maybe China if, if, it, if they open again one day, Japan, all, all the part in the world, uh, entire Europe, um, the Middle East, the, the rest of the Middle East, maybe Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan. Yeah, they say it's very nice. I don't it's know beautiful. if you have been there. It's beautiful. Yeah, I, I've been there in 2015. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very, very beautiful. If you go to Mongolia, you just need to make sure you go at the right time. Because if you go yeah. at the wrong time of the year, it's freezing cold. It's yeah. Yeah. freezing cold. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, um, I just want to, to take my time and, and visit all these places I want to see. Uh, Af Africa now is, is a big dream for me. And um, where people can find you? So do you have a, you say you have a website? 
Yes, I have a, a website and an Instagram account with the same name. Um, it's in Spanish. It's called Deportista Nomade. Okay. I will, I will um, add it in the description so people can find it. Do you write in Spanish or do you write in English? Yeah, I write in Spanish, but some some friends of mine uh, that don't speak Spanish told me they use go, uh, Google Translator. Okay. And understood almost everything. So, so, so I that, think it's a good option. Good. So I will add yeah. your, your website and your Instagram account in the description. So guys, if you want to follow Juan, just go to the description and click on his uh, website. <laughs> Thank you so much, my friend. It was a pleasure to have you on the on this podcast, Juan, and we wish you um, all the best and keep safe. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wish you the best. <laughs>